Hello, my name is Jason Johnson, and thank you for watching. I hope you find all my videos helpful, and thank you for subscribing to my channel and sharing them with others. If you have any questions or feedback, you can leave a comment below, and I'll answer as quick as possible, or I'll try to point you in the right direction. This video is going to be the Cisco Netacad IT Essentials Chapter 7. It's going to be a two-part video, and this is going to be part one. Part two, the the, the link to the the link to the part two video will be in the description below. Uh, this is going to be part one of two. Uh, we're going to be looking at principles of networking. We're going to be looking at networking standards. And then we're also going to be looking at physical components of a network. And then in part two video, we'll be looking at uh, networking concepts and technologies and doing a chapter summary. So if you're looking for part two, that's in the, in the description below. And let's get started here with part one. So part one, principles of networking. When we are um, talking about networking, networking is where we take two devices and we allow them to communicate. And so we do that through a number of different ways. We can do that through physically wiring those, comp uh, those devices together. We can take uh, copper cabling and we can tie those together. We can do some type of wireless communication. Uh, whether that's Bluetooth or whether we do Wi-Fi or we do uh, radio frequency or something along those lines. But we tie those devices together so that they can communicate. And it ne doesn't necessarily have to be two computers. Uh, you can do a computer to a printer. Um, you can do uh, two computers to each other. Um, or you can just do a computer to a uh, maybe a switch or a router so that you can get Internet access. So when we talk about computing devices, there's some terms you need to know. Uh, in the Cisco world specifically, so that um, um, with this course, you're going to have these terminologies and you're going to be using some of these icons and things like that. So it's important to understand that. On the A plus certification, you're also going to have certain terminology uh, that you need to be familiar with. And then if you move up and take other courses in the Cisco NetAcad, so for example, if you do uh, routing and switching, introduction to networks, um, that type of course, then these, these terms are going to help you with that as well. So let's look at uh, some of the terms here. A host device is any device that sends and receives information on the network. So that could be a computer, that could be a printer, that could be a router. Uh, it doesn't matter. That, that's just the host device. If it's sending information, it's the host device. An intermediary device, and I always have trouble pronouncing this here, intermediary device, that exists in between a host and device. So if you're talking about a switch or a router, um, it's not necessarily um, a host device because it's not sending any information. It's receiving information and then forwarding that information on or doing something with that. So it's called an intermediary device. And then we have media. And the media is the component over which the message travels from source to destination. That can be your copper cabling. Uh, your media could be uh, fiber optic lines. Uh, it could be a wireless connection. That, that's your media. Uh, the media in this case is not a movie. Um, it's not a song that you're sending across. Uh, that that's your data. Um, the media is um, the or the medium or the media is what you're sending your data across. So and it's giving a question here. Can you name each of the device or component show here um, shown here? If you uh, have used Packet Tracer before, the Cisco Packet Tracer, uh, you are going to be very familiar with these icons. Or if you've used Cisco uh, terminology and icons before, you're going to be familiar with these. And for the most part, these are. Uh, the easier, easier, easy to find when you when you see a cloud uh, like this, that usually means that you've got some kind of cloud computing. Um, it's represented as the internet. Uh, basically, when you see the cloud, you can just say that you know that it's a networking area. You just don't know everything about it. You don't know all of the information that's there, and that's why we call it a cloud because we don't need to know everything about it. We just need to know that we connect to it, and our information either passes through it or goes to a device inside the cloud. And this one is just for a copper cabling here. When you're working in Packet Tracer, you see a black line. That's that's just uh, regular uh, copper cabling. Uh, then you have your uh, other types of cabling here. You might have Wi-Fi here. And you'd have Wi-Fi, your Ethernet or copper cabling. You have your um, other types of media, which would be a serial connector here. If you're going to connect serial connectors or uh, fiber optics, something along those lines, you might represent it with a with a uh, kind of a lightning bolt line, but you do it in red. On your um, devices over here, you know, you have your host device or an end device uh, that, that's interchangeable term. If it's an end device, that's usually like a computing device, um, or you'll have a mobile device. Uh, printers, uh, that will also be a host device or an end device. 
your switches, um, usually we're going to represent those with a, with a 3D rectangular box, and we're going to have the arrows going in and out. That's just representing a switch that it's passing information through at the layer two. And we'll talk about layers later on, and it, it, it's above the scope of this video. Uh, but I'm just getting you familiar with some of the terminology that you'll be using in the networking world, uh, that, that a switch is a layer two device. And when we say a layer two device, we're talking about the OSI model. And then you have a routing device here. And this routing device, if you just have a router that's just this uh, kind of circle here, or 3D circle, without the antenna, it's just a basic router. But if it's got the antennas on there, that means it has the capability uh, to do um, wireless broadcasting. So just so when you see those devices. Now, uh, when you're looking at these devices, just be familiar with the different uh, icons and terminology. Um, on the A+, Plus, you're probably going to see maybe some icons. You're probably not going to have to identify those, uh, but it may be on there. So you just need to be familiar with the different icons and the different uh, types of networking components that you're going to be using. Now, when we're looking at types of networks, uh, let's move over to the next slide here. Uh, we have lots of different types of networks, and, and I've got some links in the description below over these next few slides that have a lot of different information that you can go check out. So check out the description below and check out the links on there, and you can see those. Um, the different types of networks that we have, it really depends on how they're broken down um, as far as their size and their types of connections. We have different types. Uh, you have your, your local area network, and a local area network is a group of host devices or end devices. You've connected those together so that they can see each other. And those devices, you might have two or three computers, and then those connect to a printer. And that would be a local, an example of a local area network. And then you connect those local area networks to other networks, and then you get a, and I'm going to jump here ahead, wide area network. So you have a wide area network here. This could be really considered a wide area network. Um, you could have a wide area network over here. The internet is an example of a wide area network. It's a lot of local area networks or local devices that connect into um, a cloud or a wide area network. Some of the other terms, you can have a wireless local area network. That could be just where you set up a, a router. Let's just say that you set up a router here with some antennas on it and you connect in through wirelessly to these end devices and that would be a wireless area network. Uh, you could have a, a personal area network and a personal personal area network would be an example if you had a Bluetooth devices. Uh, for example, if you had wanted to have two laptops that do Bluetooth and then you have, uh, for example, in my case, uh, you have a, either a keyboard or a mouse uh, or headphones that are connected into your device uh, through Bluetooth. Those devices are communicating with each, each other, so those are a, in that personal area network. And then you have metropolitan area networks. A metropolitan area me network might be that where you have uh, government buildings or you have a wide sit kind of like a city area, uh, a larger area. Uh, you can also have a CAN, which is a campus area network. And a campus area network you might think of just as a college, but it's also, uh, let's say that you have the, um, the Cisco campus, uh, you know, the, building, the buildings that are connected there. Uh, it's it's really when you connect buildings together and you call that a campus area network. Um, and, and the best representation I can say is when you think of a college, uh, you have multiple buildings, but they are all connected together. Um, you would think that those were that's a local area network, but you might have multiple local area networks inside that campus area network. And then that campus area network could connect into a metropolitan area network or it could connect into a wide area network. So those are just some of the different terms. And there's other types of networks out there. These are just some of the major common ones. I would re I would refer you to the course material to go in and look at the uh, different types of uh, networks that you have on um, for, for an example. Now, another type of network is a peer-to-peer -peer network. A peer-to-peer -peer network is where you just connect host devices or end devices together. You don't have any type of server. There's no dedicated server going taking place. Uh, that's just, uh, for example, at my home, uh, we can connect in and do some video gaming. My daughter and I play Minecraft and my you know, cousins and other family members. We either play Minecraft or we play Xbox together. And those devices connect to each other, usually through either a router or through a switch. Uh, but there's no dedicated server. We don't have any type of a printer server. We don't have a uh, you know any, any type of file server or anything like that. So that's just considered a peer-to-peer -peer network when you just have devices talking to each other. Each computer decides which resources you're going to share. There's no central administration or security. So there's no 
uh, no central person setting up logins. You don't have common logins across different computing. Each computing device you would log into, and then that security is uh, administered local on each device. Now, when we're talking about client-server network, we're talking about networks that have some type of server involved. There's usually a, a, a network operating system or a NOS. Uh, you're going to see that terminology um, in your study. So a NOS network operating system, and that's uh, where you would either have a Linux server or you would have a, uh, you know, a Windows server. And those servers um, offer some type of service. And so you would have either a DHCP server coming through there. You might have a web server. You might have a file server or a print server or some other type of service, service that's being offered to the clients or the end devices. The resources are controlled by a centralized administrator. You have common logins or you have single logins, single sign-ons so that you can log on to multiple computers and have the same username and password. And your login, you might have roaming profiles where when you log into one computer, your information just gets copied along down to that end device, and then you can use that. So that's a peer-to-peer -peer network and a client-server network. So you need to be familiar with those terms. Now, when we move to this next subject here, we're going to be talking about networking standards. And on networking standards, uh, there are governing organizations for the networking various networking uh, various networking standards. Let me say it that way. Excuse me. So you have governing bodies. And these are not all of the ones that are out there. So I would recommend you go into your course material and check out all of those. You can also do a Google search and just put, uh, you know, network governing bodies or uh, you can put uh, network organizations and you're going to see organizations like the IEEE and the IETF, maybe ISO. And if you want to know more about those, I've put some links in the description below on each one of these. Uh, it'll take you out to their personal or their, their pages or the Wikipedia page on that. Uh, but these organizations develop standards for networks so that any client running any operating system can access network resources. The way I like to think about it is I, li I like to think about it like it's a language. Let's say that we are going to have a common language so that when we get a group of people together, we know that we're all going to be able to communicate and understand each other. So that we know that when I say the word Apple, we're all referring to a um, – a, a plant that you eat, you know, the, or a fruit that you eat. It's not a plant, it's a fruit. Uh, a fruit that you eat. And so we can commonly refer to that uh, that fruit apple, and we can say, okay, this apple is a fruit that we eat. And we all know that, so that when one person references apple, everyone in that group that's discussing that knows what an apple is. And then we, then, and then we would also say, well, we also have red apples and green apples, and there's different family, you know, you know different, different, um, versions of that apple. You might have a Jonah Gold or you might have different types of, um, you know, different types of apples in there. My point being is that we have a common description of that fruit, of that, of that, of, of that apple. And so everyone know, understands what that is. So these organizations, they do that. They say, we're going to do a certain type of cabling or we're going to do a certain type of network connection. And everyone if you're going to build devices or if you're going to build uh, build things that communicate with this network, it has to meet these certain standards so that all of the devices and all of the things that are connecting into this network can work together and work properly. And so we have that governing body that sets that. Now, when they do that, we have uh, certain things that you're going to need to memorize in the networking world. Uh, you really do need to, for the A+, specifically, and on into the networking world and on into the A+, plus, the Network+, plus, the Security+, plus, and then when you move over into the CCNA, you need to know some of the different models in the networking world. And one of those models is the OSI model. I would highly recommend that you memorize the OSI model. Earlier when I said that it was a Layer 2 or a Layer 3, a router works at the Layer 3, you know, a, a switch works at the Layer 2. Uh, your medium is at the Layer 1, so our cabling, our wireless network, you know, our wires, when we send our bits through in binary – that's at the layer one, the physical layer. And you just need to know this OSI model. Um, you also need to know the TCP IP model, which is a newer model, but it directly translates um, to uh, – it only have, it only has four layers, um, and it don't, you don't really call it different layers. You don't give those numbers. You just, you just talk about what those are, where it's network access, whether it's the internet layer, the transport layer, the application layer. But you need to understand both of these models, and you need to understand how they operate. Now, at the A-plus – level you don't need to know it as in depth as you do at the network plus or the security plus or you know at the ccna uh, and beyond but 
for the A+, plus, you need to have a good understanding about the different levels and what they do and some of the ports that go to each one. Uh, you know, which ports, uh, you know, when you when you're dealing with ports and we talk about those in other uh, in other uh, PowerPoint and other videos, um, you know, when we when we work with our ports, uh, when we work with uh, software, when we work with our medium, when we do our cabling, which which layers do those correspond to? So the OSI model and the TCP IP model are both reference models. They use to describe the data communication process An applica as, as application data is passed down. So you let's say, for example, I'm, and I'm going to use the example of we're going to request a web page. So my computer or my end device opens up the browser at the application layer and the browser we type in a uh, we know Cisco.com and it starts traveling down through the the OSI model here or the TCP IP model. And at the different layers, it encapsulates. And that's one of the words you need to become familiar with is encapsulation or encapsulates the information. And it takes those bits and it encapsulate the encapsulate those into packets and frames. Um, and those get wrapped up. And as they go down, they get wrapped up down to the binary level. And then it gets transferred into ones and zeros and sent across the medium. So an application data is passed down through the layers. Protocol information is added at each layer. So at each layer, it adds information here. We, you know, we might add up. Uh, TCP IP information here or IP internet protocol, your IP address. And, you know, at the layer two, you might add your, you would add your MAC address uh, and then it would then convert it into ones and zeros. Uh, but it's the encapsulation process. So it takes that information and as it goes down, it puts frames around there so that it sends these packets and frames through um, or packets of information through and it goes to the other end. And then their OS on their on their end, the medium picks it up and then it goes back up and decapsulates it. So the, the server takes that web page and it says, oh, I got a request for this web page. And so the Cisco web server says, OK, I've got a I've got a request for my main page. I'm going to take that information and I'm going to send it back to the device that's requesting it. And so that is the at a very high level how the networking model works. And these organizations, they create these models and they create these standards so that everything can communicate together in the networking world. Now, some of these different standards that we talk about, we talked about the model here. Uh, we're also going to talk about the wired and wireless standards. So they set standards to say, if you're going to communicate to wireless devices, we, we, take it, um, we, we just take for granted that we can take a mobile device and we can say, oh, we're going to connect into a wireless network. And does this, does this you know, we, we walk into a building and we say they have Wi-Fi and we click Wi-Fi. We put our password, a username and password in, and we connect in. If they've got an open Wi-Fi where there's no security or no authentication, uh, we just go ahead and click on that, and we just connect into the Wi-Fi. And we don't give it any really second thought on what's happening. Well, in the background, previously, the organizations have set standards, and they've said, if you're going to broadcast in Wi-Fi, and if you're going to be broadcasting on this uh, spectrum of uh, radio, you know, frequency, then you need to meet these certain standards. And those certain standards are the IEEE 802.3. That specifies as the network implement. Um, that's, that's Ethernet. Uh, and, and, and I was talking about wireless as an example, but we're talking about Ethernet and wireless and along those lines. So the Ethernet, and that's, that's the copper cabling. That's the 802.3. Uh, that specifies that a network implement the carrier sense multiple access with collision detection. Man, that's a lot of words. Carrier sense multiple access with collision detection. You do need to know that, so that's one of the terms you need to memorize. Uh, but that's CSMA slash CD. Uh, what that does is that just says that it's uh, sensing that there's information going across, so it has collision detection. It keeps those packets from colliding with each other so that you don't uh, lose data. But the 8023 standard also specifies cable types for Ethernet. So whether you're going to do the older 10 base T or, you know, the newer 100 base uh, T or uh, 10, gi 10 gig or, you know, uh, you might have had the t heard the term Cat5, Cat6. Uh, those are categories. Those are also set by the 802.3 standards. Those are just saying what type of cabling connections, what type of wiring, how far will um, data be able to cross, you know, go across those wires, that, that, that sort of information. Now, you also have the IEEE 802.11. That's the wireless uh, local area network, and that also has carrier sense multiple access with collision avoidance, collision detection, collision avoidance. So in the wired world, it's CD. In the wireless world, it's CA. 
but your uh, WLAN standards include 802.11a, which we don't use much anymore. There might be some wireless uh, networks around somewhere that still has the A or B standard. Um, you still have wireless devices that support that standard. Uh, most of what you're going to see, and this is March of 2017, most of what you're going to see in the networking world is in the, at the AN range. You're seeing the newer uh, models at this point or the newer equipment coming out with the AC range. Um, I just recently purchased an AC uh, wireless router for my house. Uh, I've got two of them at my house. One of them is an N, one of them is an AC, uh, and my devices connect to either one of them. The AC just has faster connections and um, you know more bandwidth, and and uh, you know get it has some different uh, things you can set with it. Uh, for the most part, it's it's just faster standards. And then we have the uh, when we're configuring an 802.11, what WLAN, you want to use the strongest encryption available. Uh, you don't, you know, they're, they're one of the early encryption methods was WEP or WEP. Uh, that's pretty much been broken these days, and you, you can connect into a wireless network and crack those pretty easy. So you want to use the strongest encryption possible at all times. Uh, you may not think that you need to protect your network, but you just need you know use the strongest encryption. And then, um, and it talks about down here since 2006, the strongest encryption has been WPA2. Um, and we're not going to talk about it in this video, but there's a couple of um, a couple of things that you can do to increase your in, in, uh, increase your security. Uh, you do multiples encryption layers, and uh, that that's another discussion for outside this video. But I just want to make a point of it that you do have different layers of encryption uh, that you can add to your wireless. Now, uh, we've talked about wireless, we talked about wired, let's talk about the physical components of a network. Now, when we talk about the physical networks of a com uh, physical components of a network, we're talking about the layer one. We're talking about what physically connects things together. And what you usually see in a network is um, in a small network at, at a home, let's talk about a small home or a, a home or a small office or the Soho, small office, home office. And you have different devices that are required to make a network operate. Obviously, you're going to need your end. You're going to need your end devices. So let's just say that we have our end devices here. We have our home computers, and um, let's say that uh, what are we doing here? So let's see, internal network. Yeah. So our internal network here. You might have a web server set up as a, uh, a small office uh, or as a business. You might have that on the cloud somewhere. It doesn't matter. Uh, what we're talking about here is we're connecting. You need to have some type of switch involved. Um, in a lot of cases for small offices, you don't do a switch. You just connect directly into a router. Uh, but if you start adding more and more devices, most routers do not have multiple connections on them. They Home routers usually have about four. Some of them, some of the more expensive ones will have eight connections. So if you have more than four devices, you're not going to be able to connect those in to that router. So you have to purchase a switch which gives you the capability of adding more in devices on. And it helps with uh, you know, you can put a, you know, a VLAN on there um, or you can do, you know, give gives you some extra layer of security on there. Uh, this is showing an, an internet firewall. Um, you can buy devices that are firewalls. You can put software firewalls in place, but this is a, you know, if we put a device in, uh, you might have an internet, internal router. Most homes don't do internal routers other than the ones that provided by their ISP. Let's say that you're with a cable company and they provide a router uh, and, and that is your internal router, uh, but it's also what uh, it's your also your modem. Um, it's your modem router. It's what allows uh, the cable company to uh, modulate the information that's coming in and then convert it and send it out into your local area network. So modems convert a computer's digital data into a format that can be transmitted to the ISP's network. So that's what a, a modem modulation demodulation and switches micro segment the lands. So they send data only to the computer that needs it. They send it to all the computer. Well, a switch will send it only to the computer that needs it based upon the, the routing. Or not the routing, excuse me, because a switch doesn't do routing. Based upon the MAC address on there. Um, you can also have a wireless access point or what we call APs or a WAP, wireless access point or an AP. Those connect the wireless devices in, in place or in, your, in, in the network. And then routers use IP addressing to forward traffic to other networks. So routers use the IP, and that's why they're called routers because they route. Switches just switch the information and just pass it through to based upon MAC addressing or the layer two. And then when we talk about a small office or a home office or a Soho, a route often includes a switch, a firewall, and an AP. This, this is a typical – this is a, how a system could be set up. How I usually see it in the United States is you have uh, some type we – don't, we don't usually use a switch. 
Uh, you usually don't have an internal firewall. Most homes, an average home is just going to have a modem router from their cable company or from their other provider, and then they're just going to connect their devices into it. And then some other places add the switch in so that they can do more than, you know, as I, as I said earlier, more than one or two devices on there. Okay, so let's uh, move on here to cables and connectors. I'm going to spend a little bit of time here talking about different types of cables and connections. Uh, you had, um, you may still work with coax cables, um, if, especially if you work with, uh, you know, a cable company coming in. They're still using uh, coax cables. Um, you have uh, fiber optic cables. Those use light signals to transmit data. Uh, they differ in bandwidth, size, and cost. Fiber optics is going to be a lot more expensive than, say, for example, a regular Ethernet connection. It's just because of uh, you're using, uh, you're dealing with uh, fiber optics and light, and it's just harder to make the connections, and it's more expensive. And you're usually at the at the A plus level, and even at the N plus level, you're probably not going to be dealing with fiber optics too much, other than just purchasing the fiber optics cable and connecting two devices. You're usually going to see those between two routers. You're going to see some type of fiber optics, or you're going to see fiber optics between an ISP and maybe a local router or something along those lines. But you don't. Most homes and small offices do not put uh, fiber optics into their building. It's just too expensive. It's too costly. It's it's hard to work with. Um, if you you know cut a, a fiber optics line, it's hard to put it back together. Um, and it just takes it takes more equipment. It takes more experience to work with those. Whereas the Ethernet or the copper cabling is a lot less expensive and it's easier to put into place. So there's different types of coax cables. We have the Tim Base 5, which they call thick net, Tim Base 2, which they call thin net. You're usually not going to see those anymore, but you still are required to memorize and know that information for the A-plus exam. You have RG59, which is usually cable TV or cable that's coming into your house for networking. Uh, RG6 is better than RG59, and RG6 is just a higher standard of the uh, coax cable. Then you have the Ethernet, um, or you have your uh, your twisted pair, um, and those are terminated with an RJ45 connection, and I've got one of those on a screen following here in a few minutes. We'll look at an RJ45. RJ11s are the uh, connection that your old, the uh, what we call the pot system, or the plain old television, or plain old television, plain old uh Plain old telephone system. Sorry, I had to laugh there. Plain old telephone system or the pot system use the RJ11s. The newer ones, this you know, we terminate these cables with an RJ45. And the twisted pair comes in two types. You can have unshielded twisted pair or shielded twisted pair. The difference between these two here, unshielded is going to be cheaper because um, it's – and this is an example of an unshielded unshielded right here. And you don't have any type of shielding on there. But if you're going to be putting in uh, – uh, Ethernet cable up next to, let's say, fluorescent lights. You need to do some type, some type of shielding to it so that you don't get the electromagnetic interference. And so then we have shielded twisted pair, and that usually has some type of uh, metallic, um, something metallic inside the plastic she sheathing there, and that uh, co that keeps it kind of protected from getting that interference. But it does cost more money because you do have to pay for that material that's put into there. And I've already talked about fiber optics down here, but you have different types of fiber optic modes. You have single fi single mode and multi-mode. Um, I'm not going to really talk about it in this video here other than to uh, – you can read about it. And, it, and there's going to be more in your course material as well. Now, when we talk about uh, cables and connectors with the Ethernet, some of the things that you need to memorize or know um, – you, you'll do this more if you're working towards your network plus or in the networking world, but you need to know it for the A plus as well. Uh, the twisted pair is the most common that's used today in 2017. Uh, it's been around for a long time. Um, it's um, I, I've been using it since the late 90s um, for, for you know just for so for a long time at least you know at least 20 years uh, that I've been using Ethernet and twisted pair. And there are two different types of uh, wiring schemes: the T568A and the T568B. And you may say to yourself, why are there two different standards? Well, there are two different standards. You don't, you do not want to interchange those. I'm just going to say a couple of comments here. You do not want to interchange these two standards out. Uh, you want to use one or the other when you're working with your networks. Um, usually, if you're doing a, a newer, um, a newer build and you're coming in and putting it in, you're going to choose which one you want. There's one of the standards that's more popular. I'm not going to, I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to say which one to use or the other. You just need to make sure that once you've started using one standard, you continue using that standard throughout your networking scheme. And the reason is because you don't want to mix and match those because then you're going to have problems with your with your um, 
cables being able to communicate with each other. So each wiring scheme is different. On the pinout, the order of the wire connections and the end of the cable, this is a T568A and this is a B. You can notice here that we have our wires here. We have our, uh, and, we, and we pronounce this, this is, or, this is white, orange, orange, white, green, blue, white, blue, green, white, brown, brown. So when you're pronouncing that and you see the white stripe on there, you just say the white first. And that's, you know, here this is green, white, green, orange, white, blue, blue, white, orange. And that's how you pronounce that. Now, when we go to the next slide here, we're going to look at uh, there's two types of uh, cables that can be treated up. Uh, we have two different types of cable, or there's more than two types of cables, but these are the two common ones. You have a straight through cable and a crossover cable. And there's a reason that we do the separate ones. A straight through cable is the most common cable that we use in uh, putting devices onto a network. Uh, the wiring scheme is the both on both, it's the same on both sides. So we, we start with A and we end with A. So both ends of the connections are A or both ends of the connections are B, but we don't do one or the other. And then a crossover cable uses both wiring schemes. You have T568A on one end and type B on the other end. And that is, uh, that's a crossover cable. And there's reasons that you're going to use those for each, uh, for each area. A crossover is when you have same type of device connection. So let's say that you're going to put two computers together you would use a, a, a crossover cable so that they can communicate together. However, the caveat that I'm going to use here is a lot of devices in 2017 are using auto sensing. Um, and I've got a link in the description below on auto sensing or the MDIX um, on that. And so um, the auto sensing just says that um, it says what were my cable pinouts and then it, it fixes it and it sends the, it sends the right signals to the right, to the right wires. Um, but not all devices do have that, so you need to make sure you understand um, uh, what, a, what the difference between a straight-through and a crossover cable is. Now, when we're dealing with uh, 568, here's another image here, and you can pause the video here if you want to see this, but this shows you the pair. It shows you your, uh, your signal IDs that are going through, and it gives you the color coding based on those there and the pen out. Here's another example of that, and you can pause the video here if you want to to see that. This is an RJ45 connection here. The wires get plugged into here. The wires get pushed into here, and they get pushed underneath these little copper teeth cleats here, and then those get clamped down onto the wire. And so the signal, this plug gets in, put into a female connector on the on the device, and the signal goes through. It makes a connection here, and then goes into the wire, and then gets sent down the wire. Seems simple enough until you miss wire and have a wire missing. Or here's another example here. This is a crossover cable that ends on each one here. One other cable I'm going to show you here is the rollover cable. You usually are going to use the rollover cable when you're connecting a device to a switch or a router to do some type of console um, to where you do some type of administration to those devices. And you can have an RJ45, and here you would have your COM port. Um, or your RS-232. Uh, a newer newer uh, cables that are coming out, you have your RJ-45 here and you have your USB here because a lot of device, a lot of network or computing devices, excuse me, like a laptop or a desktop, do not have your COM ports anymore. And so especially like a laptop. And so you have USB. So you'll have these USB to RJ-45 connections. Okay, so this wraps up part one. It was a little bit longer video, so I apologize for the length on this. It's a, a little bit over 30 minutes, uh, but we just had a lot of information to cover. So this is part one of two. Uh, the part two of two is going to cover uh, basic networking concepts and technologies. So check out the description below. I'll have a link there for the part two video. I do appreciate you watching my videos. Um, I do appreciate you um, sharing, sharing my information, and I hope you have a great day.